Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I have bought over the course of the last few months and there is a lovely stack here. <laughs> so I'm excited to share them with you. So in March, Jacqueline and I are talking about women historians and so we typically read a lot more books uh, than we feature and this time is no exception. We have been researching for months now and I have so many titles to pick, choose from. Um, whatever the case, I'm going to read them all. I just, it might take me a little more time than originally planned. Uh, so one of the books I picked up is this hardback edition of The History of White People by Nell Irvin Painter. Zon Nell Irvin Painter did uh, guest shortlisted for the Reading Moon Award a few years ago for her memoir and so I didn't realize this uh, when I picked up the memoir but she wrote this book and it's called The History of White People and she's writing about the history of who has been considered white and how that definition has changed over time and I found that this sounds so fascinating and so I'm very excited to pick this up. I went online, went to ABooks, found one a hardback copy and thankfully it was in really great condition. It's not an ex-library copy and so I'm very pleased to have found it. It can go on my list uh, with all these books that I have looking at uh, social issues here in America and all the different things and it's coming highly recommended so I'm overjoyed to have this on my list. Another history kind of text that's looking at social issues here in America um, is The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration and the Age of Colorblindness by Michelle Alexander. Now this is more of a focusing on a certain topic and the history of a certain thing. So this is looking at mass incarceration here in America and it's looking at the history of that and what that means now. Now this is the original, I believe, edition, but now there is a 10th anniversary edition that just came out sometime this year and I was listening to an interview with her on I believe the New Yorker radio hour and I'm just so fascinated and I've seen this book on people's TBRs across the book internet from the time that I started uh, watching booktube back in like 2015 so I am very much excited about this one. I already found the audiobook on uh, my one of an audiobook app they have with my library so and it's not as long as I thought it was um, I feel like it's a bit more manageable than I had anticipated but uh, I'm sure there are footnotes and things so a lot of people ask me like why I like print editions when I listen to an audiobook and that's because I like to have the print book to reference and like if I miss something instead of having to rewind the audiobook it's a bit dated isn't it could skip backwards in the audiobook and play it again or I can just open the book to the page I'm on and then and read the section that I was confused by. And I find that extremely helpful especially with more academic texts because I don't really have a choice of whether or not I listen to this audio or not. If I want to read it I have to use audio so I have to make it work for me personally. So that is what I do and I find this extremely helpful. A book that I purchased right before Christmas uh, is Tanha Lai's new book um, and that is Butterfly Yellow. This is a signed first edition and I had picked this, almost picked this up so many different times, but eventually I was like, you know what, just, just get a copy. And so I am very excited for this. I, I love her other books and she looks a lot at um, the Vietnamese uh, refugee experience here in America and then like generations after that and what that looks like. I, I admire her work so much. She does such a great job. The next book I found at Ollie's, and if you don't know what Ollie's is, it's like a Big Lots. So they have like books at extreme discounts. And so I picked up um, Jacqueline Woodson's If You Come Softly, the 20th anniversary edition. This was $1.99, I know. You can also find it on Book Outlet. And again, this is going to be a task for Goo Gone, which takes off stickers and doesn't harm the book at all, um, which is great. Uh, the other day I have a stack of books with stickers on them that I need to take off and I just do a whole like little session with an audiobook playing and it's lovely. But then I, they have to dry afterwards and so they just sit there and drying and Sam walks in and there's all these books just like all over the library. He's like, oh, you must be taking off stickers again. Yes, yes I am. So this will go in my stack, but I love Jacqueline Woodson and I'm so excited to read more of her stuff. She's just so good. And so one of the books that's been recommended to me is this one, uh, The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth Tova Bailey. And I had a gift card uh, to M. Judson because I, when you join a book club, if you already have those books, you can, you know, get a gift card for them and then you can 
get whatever you want. So I had a gift card and I saw this book and I really find it very difficult to read books about chronic illnesses like my own. Uh, so I wasn't sure if I wanted it, but I kept circling the bookstore and coming back to this book. I'm not sure what condition she has, but she is bedridden. Um, I don't know if she's like episodically bedridden or continuously bedridden. I don't know. I will find out when I read the book, but I often am bedridden and just stare at right now it's my Christmas tree uh, or I might get stuck somewhere um, and I know I feel like if I had gotten this more in my mid-20s when I still had a problem with randomly collapsing and getting stuck on the floor for hours uh, this would have been great to read because it does make you slow down it does make you think about your life it does make you have very introspective kind of examining deep thoughts and so I feel like this book is definitely going to resonate with me on that kind of level but still be like manageable because oftentimes I just can't read books about people with chronic illnesses like mine it's it's just a lot as you can imagine so so very excited about that book though everyone has recommended it for me to be for years so that's actually going to be my reading women challenge a book that's frequently recommended to you title I also went to Barnes & Noble for their post like holiday sale and I picked up uh, La Rose by Louise Erdrich and I really like The Roundhouse and I didn't like uh, The Future Home of the Living God I think is one that she wrote. Um, I really like her writing style um, and different things. I really like what she does but uh, I, I don't think she's going to be an author where I love every one of her books and I don't think that's a problem. Um, so I'm very interested to try this one and see how it is. I also have Tracks on my list, which is the first in like a series that she wrote, uh, but they're not available in audio yet. But her more recent ones are. So this is out from Harper, um, but I got this for like $2.50? $3.50? It was a ridiculous sale. Uh, so it was like, yeah, I'm gonna take it home. Of course. Also, as you know, I love cookbooks. Obsessed. And so I really love Sean Brock, who is a Appalachian South uh, chef. Uh, if you don't know, Appalachia is like this uh, vertical mountain range and it goes from the north from New York State down to this northern Georgia. And so you have Appalachian North, Appalachian Central, and Appalachian South. No one cares except me. That's fine. You just got a new factoid you can tell all your friends about. Uh, but he writes a lot about Appalachian South and the intersections of those things and, and trying to maintain the heritage of Appalachian cooking in particular. So his new book is South, uh, Essential Recipes and New Explorations. So I got this book for 50% off. It was $20 and I was so overjoyed because I did want this for Christmas. So I ended up getting it for myself, apparently. <laughs> but I really loved Heritage, which was his first cookbook, and I really love his approach to food. He also has an episode on Chef's Table and different things like that, if you want to know more about him. But he also has a dis disabling chronic illness. And so the fact that he is from my cultural background in a lot of ways, but also has a disabling chronic illness, it means a, a lot being able to see people do things, even with their chronic illness. Because if you think about it, most people with chronic illnesses and disabilities in books don't do things. They just, you know, provide a plot point for the able-bodied protagonist. I will spare you that rant today. You're welcome. All right, so those are the books that I have bought recently over the course of the last few months. Uh, let me know your favorites. Do you also love cookbooks? Am I the only one obsessed with these? I have recently gone through a lot of my old cookbooks. I used to buy them at the thrift store when I was first married, but now I'm like passing them along to some friends who are newly married and, and kind of replacing them with more like heavy duty cookbooks, i.e. they literally are extremely heavy. Okay. Anyway, so that's it for me. I will see you in the next one. I'll talk to you later.